it out of play. And when it's dry and ready, oh, dreidel, I shall play. Hey! Oh, Hanukkah, oh, Hanukkah, the Christmas of my youth, when Jewish kids got presents, but inside we knew the truth. <laughs> Each year we would anticipate, but knew it wouldn't be our fate to have a time as special as our Goyim friends, forsooth. <laughs> they ate goose and pumpkin pie, had Santa Claus, that jolly guy. They'd romp from house to house singing carols merrily. We'd eat potato pancakes, <laughs> spin the dreidel, Jewish dice and light candles to a dirge in a minor key. <laughs> when I was really little, each night we'd get a gift, something big and fabuloso, but the rules began to shift. Mom and Dad decided the year I was 11 that the first night would glean one great gift, but on the other seven, I guess the times were rougher. We'd be given as a buffer laying bags of chocolate gelt or embroidered yarmulkes, what you non-Jews would refer to as a little stocking stuffer. <laughs> oh, Hanukkah, oh, Hanukkah, could it get any worse? I was desperate to escape from the Jewish universe. Once the candles would be lighted, I'm supposed to be excited by some crappy kosher chocolates in a flimsy golden purse. The night approached, I took a vow that for eight days I'd not allow a bit of warmth between my stingy parents and myself. I thought of every evil way to sabotage the holiday, maybe dress for the occasion as a perky Christmas elf. <laughs> <laughs> that night, we'd light the candles after dinner at Normie's Deli. I wasn't hungry, though, for resentment filled my belly. In the car, I ignored them by singing a commercial. See, I yearned to be an actor like my father's Uncle Hershey. <laughs> I sang incessantly and ignored my sister's plea, but soon enough I learned that my revenge was not to be. From the front seat of the car, my mother cleared her throat. She did it with such force, I figured, ooh, that's all she hoped. <laughs> Next, a nervous silence. Then her voice began to sound with subtle joy and mystery, without even turning round. Your Hanukkah gift is something you've always wanted. <laughs> oh, Hanukkah. Oh, Hanukkah. My eyes bulged agog. The impossible was happening. They were giving us a dog. I thought I hit the lotto riding in my dad's tornado. I spent dinner and the drive home in a drunken merry fog. She claimed we'd never have a pet. Well, this was after we had let our parrot Shmuel go blind. <laughs> we sort of had the gall to keep the cover on the cage and oops, forget to feed it. We let the bird escape to watch it smash into the wall. <laughs> I guess I didn't blame her. But Dad had had a puppy. We thought he'd supersede. He loved his childhood pet and thus understood our need. But Mommy was the one in charge, the one who wore the pants. No dogs on her furniture under any circumstance. <laughs> well, somehow she gave in and forgave our avian sin. And on that never-ending drive home, I felt newfound love begin. Not just the quick attachment I was forming for our gift. I saw my mother differently, some hope to seal our rift. I revved my little body back and forth to speed us up, to get home to light the lights and greet the brand new family pup. Oh, Hanukkah, oh, Hanukkah, I readied our menorah. I thought that I would pee my pants and dance a little horror. <laughs> As I lit the candles wick to wick to end the customary shtick, my face felt flush and moist. I could feel him start to lick. As mommy disappeared to go and fetch my heart's desire, I surveyed my lifelong catalog of names that I would pick. We waited, hearing nothing but the ticking of the clocks. Then she turned into the hallway with a giant cardboard box. I used my x-ray vision to try to see just what was in it. But as she came closer, closer, I thought, hey, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> that box had not a hole. And terror gripped my soul. No yaps, no barks, no movement. Why, it must be dead or drugged or just really, really well behaved with good, strong breath control. <laughs> she plopped it on the table. I stood up on a stool. The box was sealed with packing tape. I knew she could be cruel. <laughs> Dad took a key, tore through the tape, reached in, and then pulled out 
A stuffed leather English bulldog oh. with tassels for eyes and rivets for toenails. <laughs> it was an ottoman. <laughs> 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 a leather dog. <laughs> oh, Hanukkah. Oh, Hanukkah. I didn't bitch or moan. She meant well, and she compromised by throwing us a bone. <laughs> it won't go nuts if it's not fed, and certainly it wouldn't shed or chew the furniture. Species don't destroy their own. <laughs> I know it left me high and dry. And to this day, I don't even try to celebrate or deal with the mental chazerai. So what then is the moral of this oddly epic sonnet? When I see a dog, do I pet it or put my feet upon it? <laughs>